Hi, this is Megan Jacks, Creative Memories Independent Advisor. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the layout assembly with some design insights for sketch number four from the November 2020 Creative Memories Virtual Crop. If you'd like a copy of this sketch, you can head on over to the Creative Memories blog and search for November 2020 Virtual Crop, and this is sketch number four. A couple of key details with sketch number four is this triangle detail in the opposite corners. So I'm gonna show you how to cut this. This was the tricky part of this layout. Once I had these corners figured out, the rest of the layout came together really easy. I found some photos that worked perfect. Um, and so I'm really excited about the layout, but getting these triangles of the right shape was probably the, the trickiest part of the layout. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. So we'll get started with these triangles. The one thing I noted was the spacing here at the bottom. And these photos look to be, I'm giving a rough estimate of about four wide, not quite four tall because they're not perfect squares and there is spacing between them. So I started with a piece of eight by, I think I went up to maybe 10 and a half. And when I did the eight by 10 and a half on, I did a sample of it, it just didn't work quite right. It wasn't the right angle. So what I settled on, and I actually used cardstock to practice this, I settled on doing seven inches by 10 and a half, and then cut on the diagonal. And then when I separated those to kind of imagine what they would look, on, look like on opposite corners, I thought that I had a nice comparison. I probably could have come over here maybe a little bit more to seven and a half, or have taken it a little bit steeper up to um, 10 and three quarters, pushing my way maybe up to 11. One of the challenges here is that I need to be able to make a cut that fits in my 12 inch trimmer. And so if you get too far from each other, if I start pushing up here to 11 by eight, I'm going to have a diagonal length that is too big for the trimmer. So the seven by 10 and a half, works great. So that's what I'm going to start with when I make my cut. So I'm going to give you a quick um, preview of the papers I'm using. I am working again with my Snowpocalypse 2019 photos. So I am using the Frost collection. And the photos that I'm going to be using are some really nice, just kind of what I called my pretty photos from the event. So I have some of the foil accent paper because I really liked it, it was really pretty and glittery. And then I've got just a nice, subtle, tonal background paper to go with. So this paper here, the foil paper, is what I'm going to cut to, the, um, to make my triangles. So we'll get started with that. It's just a basic straight cut here. Um, I just am going to cut to seven by 10 and a half. So I'm gonna first cut to seven. I experimented in some other ways to try to make these corners um, to be really efficient with my paper and it didn't work so well. One of the things I will tell you is I always make my first 12 inch cut, I always make sure I'm cutting so that I'm gonna have my biggest piece of 12 inch length um, chopped from my 12 by 12 paper. So since um, I was cutting a seven inch, that gives me a full five by 12 paper. If I had cut my 10 and a half inch length first, I would have only had an inch and a half by 12. So this is a great way to be efficient with your paper is just to think about what's going to give you that biggest chunk of full 12 inch length because I can use this later for something else. So now I'm coming in here to 10 and a half which is also taking an inch and a half off. Sometimes I double check the over here on um, my the side with my arm because if my paper is just a little bit off, say it happens to be 12 and an eighth um, inches wide, I would actually, if I was relying on this side for measurements, it wouldn't work so well. So there's 10 and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and make the cut. So now I need to make my diagonal cut. Now, one thing to note here in the sketch is the how my positioning is. If I were to cut this way, 
my diagonal would be the wrong direction. I would have a corner here and I would have a corner here. So I need to make sure I'm cutting in the right from the right corner to the, the correct corner to the correct corner, which is the upper left to the lower right in order to mimic the layout. If I wanted my layout to go the other way, I would cut it opposite, but I'm gonna be going from upper left to lower right. So when I put it in here, I gotta think about that. Now you can see this fits in the trimmer. I am extending past what is typically thought of as the cut zone. I can tell you from my experience with the cardstock, I may not actually be able to go from tip to tip, but I can just use my scissors to make that final little snip. I'm lining up with my cut line and I'm going to roll my trimmer up. And I didn't quite clear at the bottom, I'm still attached. So I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors and just make that quick final snip. So now I have my two corners. Now I'm gonna set one aside for a minute because I'm just going to work on one side of the layout at a time. I'm grabbing my paper here and that's how it's gonna go on in this corner. One of the things that I would normally think about doing, I'm not gonna take the time to do it right now, but as a paper saving measure, I could go ahead and slice off this corner of this paper if I wanted to and just attach this with some adhesive or build it on a, um, a Jeep album page or another piece of cardstock. If I was concerned about using a background paper, like if I really liked the other side or wanted to be able to use more of this paper in another project, I could cut off the corner and use it someplace else. But I'm not gonna take that step today because I just don't. I'm not in love with the back side of the paper and just from a time standpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm going to adhere this down in the corner I'm not going to do much adhering up here because I do in the sketch, it shows I'm gonna layer a photo there. So I'm going to leave this upper tip, not adhered down much so that I can slide that under there. So now I've got this lovely border detail that I'm gonna work with and I have, um, since I'm doing the Frost Collection, I'm doing this as a part of a series of layouts for a winter event that we had. I am going to repeat my use of the Crystal Chain Border Maker cartridge, and I'm gonna do that in navy right in here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do a quick, just lay it down. Now, because this is kind of a glamorous, um, layout for me. I've got really pretty snow photos or what I think are some pretty snow photos. I'm actually going to bring in the medallion chain border maker cartridge. It's one of my favorites um, to pair with the medal or the crystal chain. They fit nicely together and when you layer it on top and I've done it here in the bronze shimmer so it's got that kind of pulling from the gold tones of the foil paper. You can see if I can get this to play nice. It gives that nice detail here and it's kind of hard to see. Let me put it together and I'll bring it up closer to the screen so you can see it. I'm using repositionable adhesive and I'm just doing light passes on my border. I am not pushing hard. One of the reasons I'm not pushing hard is that then doesn't put any adhesive on my background or much adhesive. You could also use a piece of sticker um, sheet or another piece of paper. So I've got my adhesive on my medallion chain and I'm going to go ahead here. Um, when I cut this, I cut this from a scrap of 10 or of uh, bronze shimmer. So I don't have a full 12 inch length. I'm, so I'm going to cheat in from the middle and I'm going to line it up and I line up the curvy part of the medallion chain to go with my poofy parts of the crystal chain. The spacing works nice. So I just put that down, go all the way down. And 
And so there you go. Let me, you can kind of see, has that really pretty navy with the bronzy gold. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay this on. I'm guessing I'm about three quarters of an inch from the edge here. So there is the basics of page one. I'm gonna just repeat it on this other side. This is just mirroring. So it's an easy background page to do. I'm just snipping off the little bits of my border that were overhanging. And so real quick, I'm gonna um, go ahead and take a quick pause and I'm gonna put together page two because when I put together the whole layout I want and the photos on here, I wanna show you everything all together. So just hang on just a quick second. All right, I am back. I've got my second page done. I've got the nice mirroring in both corners. I am following this sketch pretty faithfully. It worked pretty, It worked well with my photos. I did make one change, however. It shows three kind of squarish photos here. I did not have a total of six photos to use. I only had five. So what I did is I am putting two vertical photos in the space where I'm using three photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, walk you through putting on the photos and show you the sizes that I'm using. I had two fun horizontal images and I kept them as four by sixes. And then you can see I've got some nice um, icicles that we're forming in our um, on the houses. And so here's my overall layout of my photos. So now it was a chance I needed to go ahead and mat everything. And let me show you with the matting because I was going to just do navy mats. So I cut some, my photos here are three and a half by five. My photos are four and the ver horizontal photos are four by six. So for my vertical images, I had four by or four by five and a half inch mats. And then I put them on there with the navy. I love the navy. It pops off of the background, but my photos were kind of falling, disappearing into the mat itself because a few of these are nighttime images and they're a little bit darker. So what I decided to do was grab some cloud cardstock, which I trimmed fairly close. I'm only an, um, about an eighth of an inch larger than the overall size of the photo. So I'm three and five eighths by uh, five and one eighth which then when I add to my photos or my add my photos back to my navy mats, you can see it just pops off that page or that mat a little bit better. So that's the mat treatment that all my photos are going to get. And I'm going to put those together really quick. That's a technique that I've been using a lot in this virtual crop is doing the double mats. It's not something normally I do. It just happened to be that the mat colors that I was choosing needed a little bit more um, accent between the photo and the mat itself. And also, um, if you watch the other videos, you'll notice with this Snowpocalypse series of photo, uh, layouts, I was doing, I was using crimson. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm not using any crimson in this layout. I decided to use a bronze shimmer when I started trying to work in the crimson. It just was getting a little too busy. And so I decided to stay a little more glitzy with this one and not worry about the crimson accents. So on my other layouts, I was using that crimson accent in the mats by doing that thin bit of crimson with the navy mats. So just keep putting these together. I really like the three and a half by five size of photos. Um, gives me a little bit more space to play with. I have a tendency to crop my photos when I print them. So I don't always have a lot of room to crop after I've printed. I usually can slice off a quarter of an inch, sometimes a full inch. But I have a difficulty sometimes going from a really big photo, like a four by six, getting it down to a three by four is almost impossible. 
And then for my four by six photos, I have a six and one eighth by four and one eighth inch mat. So my little thin cloud mat around the photo is only an eighth of an inch bigger than the photo themselves. And then I've gone for a full six and a half by four and a half inch navy mat. Normally what I would have done to save cardstock is I actually would have trimmed my photos down a little bit and just use um, four by six mats. But I wanted these photos to take up a little bit more presence on the page since I didn't have a ton of photos. So I'm gonna go for that little bit more aggressive photo size. And I was using mats for our cardstock for the mats, so I don't feel like I'm wasting or using more designer paper than I want. And of course, I could always cut out the center section of these cardstocks mats, but I'm not gonna take the time to do that today. Last mat going on the photo, or the last photo going on the mat here. So now I can start kind of tucking things into place a little bit. I'm gonna do a quick dry fit. I've used repositionable, so I've got some ability and I didn't quite adhere my corners down because I knew I would be sliding some photos in. And putting this in place here. like my spacing. I'm gonna tuck this one up a little bit. I'm gonna, instead of, here I'm centering these two in the this column section, but because of this one, if I were to center down here, I would have a really big gap here. So I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of center these two to each other and the page here. Maybe I'll bring that one down and keep these two four by sixes on the same level, which is what they've done here in this sketch. You can see they have taken these three images and they have centered them um, and spaced them evenly vertically within this column, this roughly four by four column. They have paired the, four, the two horizontal images. They have made them the same height. And then they have taken this vertical image on this side and they've mimicked the spacing from top to bottom. And that's gonna give you that balance. So you're grouping things together and then centering that group within the spacing on the page itself. So I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pages, my photos down with that general thought in mind. I am able to eyeball it for the most part. I work, um, when I'm making my videos, I'm standing while making the videos. I normally am sitting down when I'm scrapbooking. I don't normally stand up. But the way I do the videos, um, it lets me see what I'm doing on my screen so I can make sure that I'm keeping everything within the screen so you all can see it. So I'm really perched from above right now. So it's giving me that ability to easily see my top and my bottom. If I was just sitting and working, I would sometimes use a ruler or I go ahead and take a quick stand and make sure that my spacing looked good. And you definitely could use a ruler to help you out with this. Grab the, um, I ran out of repositionable adhesive. So I'm gonna switch over to regular adhesive. And with regular, you just need a little bit in each corner. I'm going to give you tell you my trick here. When I'm holding my reposit my um, permanent adhesive, I keep my finger on this dial, and I will put a little bit of pressure down every time I'm basically done. So as I'm going, I put pressure on it, and that helps stop the wheel, so that I can pull up, pull away, and I'm not putting on more adhesive than I want. And now I'm going to tuck this in over here. Double checking, I need to bring it down just a little bit. That looks pretty good. So, 
now I've got my overall, my photos are all placed. So next up on the agenda, I need to put a title in place here. And I mentioned before and that I'm using kind of a play on words with the word snow. So I wanted to use the word, the title snow pretty. Instead of so pretty, it's snow pretty. And I went ahead and I used my die cut machine um, and I quickly made the word snow out of some bronze shimmer. And that's gonna go over here. On the under here where they show the title as and then I used creative memories the white um, script photo uh, stickers and I use my decorative trimmer and this is about an inch wide piece of navy cardstock it was a little tight to fit in you can see I had to bring up my Y a little bit it's pretty tight with my my letter P there but it works and I use my decorative trimmer so it's got a little bit of a, um, a wave going to it and that's gonna come down here. So there's my title. And over here, they show some um, embellishments with a journaling. So what I did, I struggled a little bit with this. This one took me probably the longest part of anything for designing this, was I went with a four and a half by five inch mat because I wanted to stay balanced. And I also needed to use the navy cardstock because I tried just putting a piece of journaling paper here. It didn't work. I tried using the lighter cardstock with the cloud cardstock and it didn't work. So I went with an overall bigger piece of, so it's four and a half by five inch mat here of the navy. And then I've got a three and one eighth by four and one eighth piece of cloud. And the reason is, is because I went with a three by four inch, um, piece of journal paper and so my cloud cardstock here is mimicking this just an eighth of an inch bigger so it's just that three and one eighth by four and one eighth and my journal paper will sit there on top of that cloud mat and then once I get this on here and I really like this card stock, the journal paper, because if I do mess up, it's super easy for me just to get a new piece and put it on. Lay this on here. And then what I'm doing here, because of, if they show this embellishment detail, what I did here is I grabbed some, my Snowflake Trio Punch, and I've got, and I punched some snowflakes in both white and the bronze and I'm gonna just place these on here and my repositionable adhesive ran out so I'm not gonna actually put them on at the moment I will do that here in a second but you can see and you can layer the um, the white and the bronze together. It's really pretty. There's lots of options here to be able to put the snowflake embellishments on and they're kind of twisted together a little bit. But you can see things start to take shape. And this is where you can go through your punches and you may find that you have other little snowflake and um, I had some little little stars out of the snowflake border maker cartridge. There were some little point dots there. It also has these little cute almost look like little flowers. So I grabbed some of those too. So I will continue to put these on and get them arranged in a um, formal manner. And I think I might put some over here too, but overall this is the layout. Um, the key points were these triangles, cut that seven, and a, seven by 10 and a half, cut on your diagonal from the upper left to the lower right and you should be good to go to get this all put together. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to see your sketch. Please share um, with me in the Facebook group. It's um, If you go to my Facebook page, Scrapbooking with Megan, and then go to groups, you can, excuse me, it's my Facebook page is Megan Jack Scrapbooking. My group is Scrapbooking with Megan, and I hope to see your layouts there. Thanks for watching.